everyone, this is Nathan Williams with BlackRain79.com, and I am back here with another strategy video for you guys. Um, continuing on with the theme of Zoom, I've decided to uh, grab a couple more hands here. This time it's uh, two cent, five cents, and continuing with six max. Um, as you can see, I don't have a whole lot of information. Once again, uh, the red number uh, in brackets is the number of hands. Um, I've talked about it many times before. I'm not a huge fan of Zoom. I don't play it that often. Uh, I think the games are overly tight. There's a bunch of nits just playing a million tables. Uh, and you can't get position on the fish, which is huge. So I typically play the regular tables, but I know that a lot of people do play these games, so that's why I'm trying to make some more videos uh, um, in this format as well. Um, but also the other thing is like, you know, when you, when you step into like an NL5, uh, zoom, um, player pool on poker stars, you're probably going to be playing with about 400 other people, right? So, um, you know, do the, the quick math there, 400 divided by six, you're not going to see the same, uh, player very often. So, um, it's going to be very, very difficult to, uh, to build up a sample size, uh, on anybody, even if you play these stakes all the time or play uh, zoom all the time. Um, so the HUD information in these uh, videos is kind of is typically going to be useless, but uh, I'll just go over the, the stats really quick here. Anyways, the twenty is the number of hands, like I said, the uh, the red number, and we got the, just the classic three, the big three: VPIP, PFR, and aggression factor. So I got two hands here. One is against a uh, a fish, and one is against a rag. Uh, we'll start with the fish hand here. So I've got queen jack on the button. Um, so a guy, uh, or I guess I should back it up there, yeah. I mean, this this guy, he didn't post. He actually came in for the mini-raise, uh, villain five here. Um, I don't have any information on this guy. Again, two hands. Um, but I do have a stack size tell here. Um, as I've talked about before, there's there's several non-HUD um, sort of uh, I'm a fish tells. And one of them is not buying in for full or not using the auto top up. And this guy started the hand with four dollars and twenty five cents, which is not, which is about just over eighty big blinds for this game. Um, you know, any reg is just going to buy in for a hundred big blinds. It makes sense for a million different reasons that I don't want to get into in this video. Um, so that's just an obvious sign. Uh, the mini raise, I mean, more people are mini raising more and more in today's games, but I think at the lowest stakes you should still be making it at least three x just because people just call, call, call everything still. Uh, well, not as much as maybe five years ago, but they still like to call a lot. So when I have a good hand, I want to raise it up a little bit. I don't want to mini raise it, you know. Um, so that's a little something as well. So what can we do here? We could just call. Uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, you know, invite some potentially bad players in the blinds to come along as well. Or we can three bet and use our position. Um, that's what I choose to do in this situation. I think I probably uh, slightly prefer that. Uh, just the fact that, uh, I don't know, it just seemed like weak, uh, weak players at these stakes. And it's just, you know, I'm going to take it down with a C bet or a double barrel a lot. So, you know, they're probably going to call. They're going to miss the flop. I'm going to bet they're going to fold. Sounds good to me, you know, so... Um, so we do three bet and we get a cold call from the big blind. Um, again, we don't really have any information on the guy. We got one hand. Uh, he did start with a full stack. So, um, but you know, as I've said many times before as well, is that people at these stakes, like I don't give unknowns any credit. I just assume they're bad players. Um, you got you got to remember the stakes here. We're playing two cent, five cent. You know, um, there's not very many good players at these limits, and so um, I tend to not give somebody credit for being a good player until they show me that. Uh, otherwise, I just assume that they're uh, they're new to the game or uh, not very competent. So the other guy actually does uh, end up folding. So we managed to uh, spike our top pair there. So we're in a three bet pot, of course. Um, so what happens there? So, okay, so I talked about before that I don't have any information on this guy. Now I do, because he's made one of those um, <clears throat> uh, non-HUD uh, I'm a fish tells uh, right here. And I'm actually going to uh, link that article uh, below the, in the description for this video below, so you can go read that. There's about five different um, non-HUD tells that, uh, and this is one of them here, which is severely under betting the pot. He's just basically put a sign on his head that says, I'm a fish right here. Uh, nobody, nobody who's a competent player would ever bet, uh, one seventh of the pot or whatever that is. Cause it's a meaningless bet. It, it mathematically, I can literally call with any two cards here. 
um, it just it's a meaningless bet. You should either check here or bet something that matters, like 60% of the pot, 70%, something like that. Um, so in this situation, I have top pair. And, and as I said before, like anything, that, when you're talking about a bet size of that, like one seventh or less down to like a min bet, um, I prefer to just ignore it and just pretend like <laughs> that doesn't even exist. Like he didn't even do anything. Just pretend he checked. So I'm basically just going to make my standard C bet here, but I'm going to raise, you know, I'm, I'm going to make my C bet probably a little bit more just because, you know, he ha actually has added that 15 cents and I want to make it more like pot size. So yeah, so I make it, you know, a little bit more of my standard uh, C bet here. My standard C bet would be about 60 cents or something like that. Um, uh, in this situation. So um, he does go ahead and call. And uh, so we catch the king on the turn, which, you know, some people uh, might get scared. Let's see what he does first. So he comes out for another uh, ridiculous bet. One sixth the pot or something like that this time. Another silly bet. So a lot of people, I think, might get scared and kind of just go into call down mode here because, oh my god, there's a king on the board. What if he hit that, you know? you got to realize the king really doesn't change anything. It didn't complete any of the draws. I mean, the only major draw, or, I mean, there's two, I guess, the 9-10 and the, the, the diamond draw. Uh, the king doesn't complete either of those. Um, there's no real reason to think that he should have a king in his hand here. Of course, it's... It, players like this it's possible they can have anything of course but um there's there's no real reason to uh to, to really slow down here and to think that uh you know we should just go into call down mode and and you know uh play his game where we're you know calling down these ridiculous small bets screw that um let's get the money in and and you know don't hold back in this situation and and you know, this is the time where, you know, this is where win rates are made and lost at uh, at these stakes. Is like, what are you going to do in a situation like this? Are you going to call down and win a medio mediocre sized pot? Or are you going to stick the money in? Again, another ridiculous bet on the river. And you can see, I'm, I'm sticking all the money in. Let's go all the way. Let's see what happens, you know? And there you see what happens. Will he have a king from time to time? And I have huge egg all over my face here because I lose a whole stack because he hit his king queen or something on the turn. Yes, it will happen. And you're going to hate life when it happens. But you got to remember, this is what happens most of the time. I get his entire stack. Um, and he, you know, he's, he's showed himself to be a bad player on the flop with the, the ridiculous bet. Again, the, the non-HUD tells. Only got one hand on this guy, I, um, so the HUD's meaningless, but when he made that, that bet on the flop of one-seventh the pot, he tells me right away what type of player he is. Um, this is what's going to happen more often than not, is they're going to uh, they're gonna play for their whole stack with something ridiculous like this. And um, that's what you just need to remember, you know? <laughs> I mean, if you play this hand and, and you know, he get, he does have the king, you're going you're gonna to curse me and go, oh, Black Current 79, he doesn't know anything about poker. you got to remember, it's there's <laughs> that's only one instance. Most of the time, this is what's going to happen. Don't win that tiny pot. Don't get scared of the king and everything. Play a big pot against these kind of players because this is what's going to happen uh, most of the time, and uh, that's going to be really good for your win rate if you can... Uh, always win stacks in this situation with uh, just top pair, not even top kicker, as you can see here. Let's move on to the uh, the next hand, the final hand here. So this one is against a reg. I have, I'm have i on the button once again. Got Jack 8 suited this time. All right, so the reg comes in for a three times open. He's a 13-6-2, which um, uh, if you guys watch my videos, read my blog, you know that I would classify that player as a bad reg. Uh, th those are weak stats for full ring. Um, I mean, they're weak stats overall, 2% aggression factor, huge uh, gap between the uh, VPIP and PFR, but they're ridiculous stats for 6-max because, you know, I mean, <laughs> there's 6 people at the table. You should be playing way more than 13% of your hands, and of course you should be raising a lot more often as well. So I consider this to be a bad reg, and these kind of players are the type of players that I like to just sort of hammer on and, um, you know, just 
bluff them, basically. <laughs> I mean, these these are the kind of guys that don't like to get the money in the middle unless they have the nuts, basically. So uh, some of them are really sticky and will go to showdown uh, again and again. You need to be aware of those ones and don't don't bluff them too much. But a lot of these guys, uh, I just kind of hammer on them because I know that they'll uh, they'll give up uh, a lot. So. This is a situation where I do, uh, you know, considering with that theme, you know, I'm going to just three bet this guy with with a hand, even like Jack 8 here, and, uh, you know, just try to apply the pressure on him and uh, just win a pot with, you know, with nothing, basically. I mean, it's a, that's always a huge victory when, uh, you know, you can uh, take a hand like this and, uh, you know, force him to fold is uh, a much better hand. Um, it obviously helps when you flop the world like this, though. Obviously, we've got every out in the universe. It's I, I, I don't even want, I'd need to make a whole video just to talk about how many outs I think we got here. Huge hand, obviously. So I'd be willing to get all the money in right here. I mean, I think I'm almost a flip probably versus a set or something in this situation. Um, so he goes ahead and checks. And so obviously, we're just going to make a standard C bet here. There's absolutely no point in checking. Again, we have just ridiculous amounts of equity. We have a guy who's probably going to fold, uh, you know, a lot of different hands here because he's a weak, uh, weak reg. So we go ahead and make a, actually a pretty uh, stiff C bet there, of, uh, close to 80% of the pot. And he, uh, he calls actually, which is quite interesting. Uh, so we hit one of our uh, massive outs on the uh, turn, and oh, I mean, basically we have the nuts. Uh, I, I don't expect them to have spades um, here very often. I mean, it's possible that he could have like a an ace king or an ace queen of spades, but that'd be pretty sick, and I'm not really too worried about that. Um, so when he checks, obviously we're just betting for value here, just betting fairly big once again, trying to get the money in. And he decides to ship on us here. So this means, yeah, I mean, one of two things. He he either, uh, it's the rare, rare scenario where he happens to have the bigger flush, but much, much more often uh, what he's going to have here is a set or uh, a, a straight, I guess, with, you know, it's it's hard. We got an eight in our hands, but he could have pocket eights, um, a hand like that. Um, but I would say the majority of his range here is a set. He always has something big here. And need to remember the player type here. We're talking about a, a bad passive reg at the, at the super low stakes. When he check raises the turn all in, he always has something, like at least a set here um, or a straight. Flush is going to be extremely rare. So obviously we're, we're getting it, and we're, we're a huge uh, favorite against the, uh, the majority of his range um, in this spot, and that's not a good river at all, but that is poker. Um, so yeah, I think we played the hand um, great throughout. Uh, we got a bad reg to put all the money in on the turn uh, when he was significantly behind. Um, and, we, you know, I think we played the hand uh, great even from the start. I mean, uh, we imagine that he's going to have a hand like that a lot when he opens uh, uh, from the cutoff like that, and we put a lot of pressure on him. And I'm actually kind of surprised he didn't fold on, on the uh, flop, to be honest. Um, this is the kind of player I actually pr probably would make a note on to not bluff this guy when he calls with, on the flop with a hand like that. This is one of these sticky regs who's just not going to fold anything. Um, but, you know, I'd say that we, uh, I, I think that we um, maximized our value versus this guy at every step of the, uh, of the way in this hand. And just unfortunately got lucky on the river there. So I uh, hope these two hands were useful for you guys. Um, make sure that you're subscribed to this channel as I'm going to try to keep making videos, um, small stakes videos just like this to uh, uh, hopefully help you guys out. Go check out my website, blackrain79.com, for weekly strategy articles on how to crush the micros. So by the way, uh, below I have a, written a free ebook on how to, uh, you know, how I achieve some of the biggest win rates in history at these stakes. You can go uh, download that for free. There's a link uh, in the description for this video. So thanks a lot for watching this, guys. It's been Nathan Williams with Black Rain